Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting. It's the 8th of October, 2020. Uh, remind you that we follow the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Uh, we try to be good to each other. I'm gonna start sharing my screen so that we can take a look at the agenda and we'll work from the agenda. Okay, so proposed agenda items, open action items. Um, adopt open JDK 8 for Docker on Debian. Retirement schedule for Debian stretch, so that's Debian 9 in our Docker images. Report on the PowerPC 64 Little Endian agent access effort. Windows Server 1909 agent support. Status report on the Docker platform support proposal action item that I have. And then a status report on Oracle Cloud any other items that we should add to the agenda. Okay, and let's go ahead. So action items. Uh, I've got the action item to open a Jenkins enhancement proposal for Docker operating system support and platform selection rules. And we've got two very good examples right now of places where we we need to actively retire a Docker image. Um, so I'll use those as examples, as a way to test the rules that I'm proposing. The two of you will be copied. I, will, I suspect that I will first start with this thing as a, as a draft in Google Docs so that we can comment much more freely before I submit a pull request to the Jenkins repository. Um, the idea is, I've got an outline later that I'll outline for you, but we've got to consider Debian 9 um, has already ended its typical support life cycle is now into long-term support. And the Debian project, when they release Bullseye, Debian, what is Debian 11, uh, will stop supporting Debian 9. So, and that'll be in sometime in 2021. So given that operating system vendor support is, is ending on this thing. Uh, the other example is that operating vendor supports ended long ago on Alpine 3.9 and Oleg Ninashev did a, a, a quick upgrade for us to 3.12, but really our process and our, our rules for support should have caused us to do that automatically anyway and did not. So, so that's, that's those two things I'll use as test cases. Now, test case additions, S390X and ARM64 will be on the the uh, the other examples, right? So S390X and ARM64 as example additions, because we've now got the, the, the Graviton instances available for us from ci.jenkins.io for ARM64, and we've had the S390X available for quite a while. Alex had the action item to investigate options for CentOS and adopt OpenJDK. Now, Jim, you've been a good voice for us to adopt OpenJDK. Anything mm -hmm. you wanted to share there? Yeah, we do have CentOS support. It's in the unofficial images. Um, one of the major things that I've been working with Adopt uh, since I started working with you guys over a year ago, or almost a year ago, uh, is pushing the um, unofficial images to official uh, so that you know, it's a little more, I know you guys graciously started utilizing some of the unofficial images because it's really not that much difference. Uh, but we have, I, I worked with the testing team. I enabled this huge big pipeline to basically trigger all the unofficial images nightly and basically test them all. And that's what we kind of were missing on the adopt uh, organization is a testing pipeline, automated testing pipeline. Uh, before, if you wanted to move an unofficial image to official, uh, it was this whole manual process that only basically one person had control over, uh, which was slow. So now hopefully we'll be seeing a bigger wave of un unofficial images moving to official images, which includes CentOS, um, some of the Debian images. Um, a, a lot of the images I've like requested had to go in line with what your images you guys support. Um, oh, right. So are the, for instance, does, does Adoptium, Adopt Open JDK provide S390X official images now? 
Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, Adopt has S390 power and ARM uh, for some time now. Excellent, all right, so already provide S390X. So that, that's good, that gives me hope that I can put one of, one of the noise sources in our platform plan is we have some images based on OpenJDK and others based on Adopt OpenJDK. Mm -hmm. And so this, that sounds like your work with Adopt will allow us to consider making everything based on Adopt so that we can delegate the, the worrying about operating system care to them. Excellent. That's yeah. Great. And that, that's one of the action items, which I'll, I'll get to after you're done yours, I wanted to add. Okay, great. All right. Anything else on that CentOS topic? No, it should be available. So you guys should be good. Okay, next was Alex submitted a pull request with deprecation notice for install plugins. We have a preview already is now delivering, delivered. Uh, the uh, the new plugin installation manager. That script uh, script it's not a script that Java program uh, resolves dependencies of uh, plugins. It's in preview and so it's available in in all our Docker images for core for Jenkins core and uh, thus far I've pointed several people to it and said look. You've reported this problem. The solution is to use plugin installation manager instead of complaining that install plugins.sh does not resolve dependencies. All right, I've still got the action item to prep a blog post on update center and plugin installation manager. Yes, that's still to do. Jim, you said you had another action item to add here. Yeah, one of my action items was <clears throat> in that PR I, I submitted a while back that got accepted about the parallelization and um, the, the rearranging of the uh, CI build tools for uh, the multi-arch images. Uh, in that pipeline, uh, we, you guys are using majority open uh, JDK images. Uh, now it seems like the shift, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, is now more majority of adopt open JDK images. And, and inside that script, I think we're still calling open JDK. So I need to go through and prune uh, the open JDK references and uh, make slight modifications. It's the, the, the core of the scripts there just needs to point to the different base images and stuff like that. Um, it should be a minor tweak for that. Excellent. And also I misspoke um, on, S, uh, on CentOS support. Um, Adopt Open JDK does provide pretty much all the architectures, but uh, for any OS, but for CentOS especially, it's a, it kind of pain in the butt. Um, CentOS um, themselves don't produce a uh, S390 image. Uh, oh. they produce, <clears throat> yeah, they they produce pretty much everything underneath the sun except S390, and there's been rumblings. Uh, now with you know the the buying out of Red Hat, and I know CentOS is slightly different than Red Hat. Um, but there's been rumblings of S390 image, but right now with the currently, you know, if you want to run CentOS based things on S390, use CLEFOS, it's C-L-E-F-O-S, uh, which is basically just a recompilization of CentOS, um, that runs on S390. Right. Okay. And now is there a Red Hat Enterprise Linux for S390? Yes. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Red, Red Hat. Uh, Red, uh, Red Hat runs fine on S three ninety in power. Uh, there is a UBI image, a universal base image, uh, which is what Red Hat push, pushes out. Uh, it's not called Red Hat OS or, or whatever. It's not RHEL, but it's UBI, which is based off of RHEL. It just stripped out some of the more like proprietary stuff. Um, but UBI works on pretty much all the architectures. Uh, well, that arm. So, so UBI is a good topic for conversation in the operating system support as a potential outright replacement for CentOS. UBI is allowed as an open uh, to act as though it's an open source thing, isn't it? It's not actually open source; it's fully commercial. But yeah, you, you don't need you with UBI. Um, if you don't have to buy a license to use UBI, right? No, no, you don't need any license. You don't need a subscription manager. You don't need anything like that. As long as I. 
everything I've read and everything I've done with UBI, you don't need a subscription manager like you would need it, like if you were on rail or something like that. Right. Okay. The UBI is available for every architecture you guys support right now. ARM 64. I don't think it has ARM 32 support, but uh, I, I know it has uh, power and S390 and AMD and ARM 64, I'm pretty sure. All right. Okay. Super. Anything else on the parallelization action item? Anything else that you wanted to say there? No, just need to clean it up a little bit, uh, removing the open JDK references. Um, Okay. AW or OW? Sorry, Jim. I oh, know you got it right. You got it right. Oh, okay, good. Very good. Uh, let's just put it like this. Use consistent. Any other action items that we need to flag here? Okay. Next topic then. Adopt OpenJDK 8 for Docker on Debian. So this was a pending pull request for a long time and is now merged. It was merged um, a while ago. Jim, I assume that your comments were handled and, and yep. addressed. Great. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the PR was pretty much perfect. Uh, Alex just accidentally pulled from the wrong image uh, once or twice, but he was able to fix those in an instant. Great. Okay. All right. I don't, is there anything else we need to note with regard to that, that uh, particular action? I think we're done with it and we use it and benefit from it. Okay. So next is retirement plan and schedule for retiring Debian 9. Uh, this is, we've got to find a way to notify people that Debian 9 support is going away, or it would be nice, I should say it differently. Uh, Alpine certainly didn't find any way to tell us 3.9 was no longer supported. They just said it on their web pages. We could do the same. Uh, but there is, there is also the option to say, hey, we're going to try to alert people that we're going to stop supporting this operating system because the vendor is going to stop supporting it. And yeah, here we go. So it's part of the part of the platform plan is includes research on other examples like Alpine, like Debian, like Adopt Open JDK, because certainly they've got the same same challenge, right? Debian nine was supported by them, and if I remember correctly, now they've they've switched everything to Buster and Beyond. So, any questions? At one, Mark, at one time, I know Alex. I think it was Alex. It was talking to Glitter. Is there like a some sort of tool that scans Docker images, looking for like vulnerabilities and stuff like that? Because, uh, you know, the way you were mentioning was that the way we found out or the way you guys found out for Alpine being retired was, oh, hey, you went on the website or someone went on the website and saw it or someone read an issue. Is there not a way to be preemptive in terms of that where like you have some sort of scanning tool? I think I think I want to say it was Alex that said there was a scanning tool he was looking into to scan Docker images for vulnerabilities. I imagine one of those vulnerabilities that would come up is an outdated OS or, you know, some problematic, like, hey, there's no support for this. And Absolutely. then we can get some sort of alerting to be preemptive about it. And there certainly are. There's SNCC and- Oh yeah, I think that was or, it. Um, there are, there, and, and I don't know how they pronounce that. My Italian wants to say it differently than I think they pronounce it. <laughs> SNCC, uh, Anchor, um, and there are, it's, it's an entire market space. And, yeah. and so there are many different competitors in that space. Uh, 
we just don't have any of them enabled. So that, that's a good point. And that's a, that would be a nice addition to our CI processes to scan our Docker images for vulnerabilities from through one of these, one of these tools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, actually, Gareth, that's one where I thought, had you been using image scanning in your previous work with Jenkins X, or was that not not a? Yeah, we used um, we used White Source. Oh, um, White Source. Or, or, White Source was is the sort of one of the commercial ones that CloudBees had a license for um, that we could use. Um, but you could. I think Anchor and Slack would probably do the same. Great, thank you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm confident there are more in that space and more coming because of the increasingly heavy use of containers and the worries that, hey, my container is out of date and I don't know it. All right, anything else on retirement plan? A uh, slightly different talk about retirement. Is there any um, movement on changing the LTS from eight to 11? Uh, oh, good question. Let's put that as a separate topic here and we'll, we'll discuss it. So, so I know we, Oleg was <laughs> trying to push that a while ago. Well, so, so what we've got is let's talk to what we actually have. So mm -hmm. we support currently we support both JDK eight and JDK 11. Yeah. And, and I've seen no move, and I don't expect any move in the near term to, to drop JDK8 support. Yeah, uh, me either. I, I was thinking more of, um, I think when you do Jenkins, when you do Docker pull Jenkins LTS, I think it's, maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I think it pulls down, you know, obviously the LTS release of Jenkins, but I think it's bundled with JDK8. Yeah, no, your, yeah, so you, I think your question is, should we switch the default mm -hmm. image? I am going to cough. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, and I haven't seen any discussion about switching the default image from JDK to JDK 11, but I think it's a worthwhile topic. And it's that again fits with part of the platform support plan. It's a good mm -hmm. thing for us to get into those conversations. So, so that we shift, should we shift people? The day will come when JDK 8 will support will end from, from various people. It may be many years away, but it will end. And mm -hmm. we'll need to transition people. Should we already make the default be to use JDK 11 with its longer lifetime. Good. Okay. Include in the platform plan discussions. Excellent, excellent question. Anything else on, on that topic? Yeah, I, I guess um, one, one slightly other thing is um, that I would actually help with S390 in terms of, I mean, you saw it running with Hotspot versus um, OpenJ9. With the release of uh, JDK 11, we, I think IBM was able to get the JIT included in 11 uh, Hotspot by default. So if you guys did release multi-arch images, which I think you guys would probably go with hotspot as defaults, because um, I don't really see you guys using OpenJ9 everywhere except that one OpenJ9 uh, image. Uh, but it would it would it would cause S390 to run normally, not super slow. Um, right, right. Yeah, it's eight on S390X does not. Right. It, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, you could still use eight as the default. You would just need to make sure if you're building for S390 to, instead of using hotspot as the base image, make sure you do the OpenJ9 variant, um, but that, that's it. But with 11, you wouldn't need to care. You, you would just build all hotspot. Right, right, good point. The, uh, so if we, now in terms of your need, if there were no S390X JDK8 image, would that be okay? If we just did S390 
support with JDK 11, would that be mm. good? Yeah, I, th I think that, I think that would, I think that would, um, it would be nice to have, have eight, but, um, I, I don't think for the workloads, most people are running, uh, eight is a requirement. I, I think, I think, uh, just some sort of Jenkins on Z is a requirement. Okay. I, the reason I ask is open J nine is a, is an open topic for me as part of the platform support where I'm thinking one way to reduce our, our platform matrix, the depth and breadth of the thing is, mm. should we, should we not do open J nine? But if we said, Oh, we're not doing open J nine, that means we would say we can't do S three ninety on JDK eight. And, mm. and that, that, that could be a blocker. You say, no, we've got to have S three ninety at least open J nine for that in order to do JDK eight on S three ninety X. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a blocker. Um, as long as there is S390 support. I'm sure someone out of the woodworks will come out and yell at, <laughs> yell at, it's like, hey, why don't we have Java 8 support? Right. Uh, and then, okay, good to know. So on um, S390X. Yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely um, something I'm interested in, in that, your proposal in terms of right. the matrix. Well, well yeah. and, and this is, this is a chance for you to, to survey your customers, your target audience, it's yep. perfectly okay if you come back while we're reviewing that document and say, no, we've got to have JDK 8, and therefore that means we must have at least one instance of OpenJ9 being supported. Good. Okay. I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll serve you that. That's a good idea. Right. Anything else on that JDK 8? versus JDK 11 is the default image. Okay, PowerPC 64, Little Indian. So the story here is um, Mark's access to PPC 64 LE agents has worked great. Um, reliable runs, etc. cetera. Uh, access from ci.jenkins.io is unreliable and we don't know why. And, and I, I'm just completely perplexed by it. Uh, is it a networking issue from AWS that my home, my home where my machines are don't have, we need to investigate further. And Alex has, has started the investigation, started an, an experiment uh, to see if he can understand what's going on. My initial experiments failed, and it may it may be that there's some networking issue in the Azure data center where where we're hosting ci.jenkins.io. There may be some networking setup, or, or I, we just don't understand what's going on, and so it needs some investigation still. So 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 I can trace it on my end with uh, Raphael. Um, are you guys? uh you said you're running on azure or aws where so the ci.jenkins.io is on azure okay um and i don't right now i don't have personally the time to do the investigation so yeah. i'm not sure there's any gain for you invoking Raphael uh right now but alex alex may and might might mm -hmm. appreciate any any insights that insights they have on how to diagnose where's the problem? Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not used to diagnosing cloud vendor to cloud vendor connections. <laughs> yeah, is it just uh, connection dropouts with SSH or what, what's like the she's the biggest issue? Yeah, so what we see is the SSH connection is established, it runs, it it continues to operate, um, but the um, uh, for instance, the remoting jar does not seem to finish loading or finish copying from from the from from the controller to the agent, and it's not clear why. Uh, we can see that there's there's in the log file there's clearly a connection, and yet and it says copying the remoting jar. But then nothing further. Now that isn't, if I remember right, that is an SFTP connection or an that 
I don't, there is something about the transfer of remoting.jar that is using, I believe, an, adi an additional connection. I, that's the, the limit of what I know mm. about it. Okay. So it's, it's, it's the, the problem breaks down when you try and transfer this remoting jar uh, to that server and something goes right. wrong. Okay. Yeah. In fact, I can even here, we'll just, let's go live and I'll show you. Um, <laughs> and and again, because I suspect the agent is currently disconnected and we can see the log. And mm. so that will, that will helps us visualize it. It's here and the, the log is completely perplexing because it's clearly doing real SSH work on the remote side. Mm -hmm. And this is, hey, this is the correct machine type. Yes, we expected it to be a Red Hat Linux, and it is. It's got a reasonable path, all those things. But then it hits this point and seems to progress no further. And I don't, I don't understand why and haven't had the the, yeah, the capacity to do the investigation, but that's that's the kind of thing that's happening. Is that is that link publicly accessible or no? Is that just for you? It is. Yes, I oh, think so. Sweet. But yeah. So let me. I'll just put it into the notes. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get with Alex on that then, and uh, try to figure it out. Maybe it's some sort of stupid firewall or something like that. Did it ever work, or is this? It, it works. This... It it has worked on occasion, and Alex saw it work. And then it started failing again. So it's huh. it's intermittent, which is of course yeah. the worst of all possible yeah. worlds. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and and it still works great for me. My mm -hmm. my agent is still perfectly well connected. And let's see if I can show that the the agent from my machine is there and runs great. So here we are. It's called this one. It's a CentOS machine. Its log looks perfectly good. And it completed the copy of the, the, the remoting jar and did a whole mm -hmm. bunch of other checks. So, so it, it definitely, it's not something where I can say, oh, it's clearly an issue on the yeah, side. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's, I don't know where the issue is. Sweet. I'll, I'll look in with Alex. Thank you for showing me. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, next topic, Windows Server 1909 agent support. So Gareth, this is the, thank you very much. Deep and sincere thanks to Gareth. Um, what we've got is November of 2020 will be the last Windows Server 1809 security release. Uh, so that's the Docker image, our Docker images are based on 1809. Docker agent images are based on 1809. Windows Docker agent, Docker agent images, 1809. Uh, so we're at end of life for for that that operating system version. We need to get running on or building versions based on 1909, and. Alex and Gareth are going to be investigating. Alex had done some initial investigating, initial prototyping to see if we could already build 1909. And as far as I can tell, he's confirmed that we need to change the, the base Windows operating system we're using before we can build the Windows 1909 image. Gareth, anything you need to report there or you want to report about what you've observed? No, pretty much that. I know Alex has put a PR up to build a base image of uh, I think it's 2004 to see if we can then build the slightly older um, Docker images on top of that. I, I, th I believe that's because I, d I don't think there are 1909 base images available on AWS and Azure. And that's, that's for me is, is really a strange one because there, I did see a, a Windows Server 1909 base image on GCP. And I, I, have, I, I don't understand why, of all people, Microsoft and their Azure hosting would not have that image. That's really weird. So yes. All right. Anything else on that topic? 
Gareth? I don't think so, not yet. I just sort of started looking at it really, so. Super, and thank you for doing it. Thanks in advance for doing that. That's a that's a, a sort of a dark corner for me where Alex really knows very well how the Windows agent Windows images are built, and I feel like I'm just barely learning. Okay, more details on on the Docker platform. Actually, maybe what we do is let's take Oracle Cloud as a topic here, and I'll give a brief status report. Then we'll we we'll use some more time on the platform support proposal. So I've, we've been approached as a project. Oracle Cloud has approached the Jenkins project. They'd like to, um, uh, they want to be more involved. And uh, they've asked for addition. We, I've met with them a couple of times, uh, discussed. And they asked that, hey, would you sign a confidential disclosure agreement so we can tell you about things that are coming and we can then work together on those before we release them. And so I've signed, a, signed the CDA with them and we'll see where it evolves. Some of the things that are interesting for the Jenkins project there is bandwidth is cheaper in and out of the Oracle Cloud than it is on Azure, where we're paying, paying. So that's interesting to reduce our Azure bill. And if they can, if they're willing to donate so that the cost goes to zero, that gets even more interesting. And other hardware related things, they apparently have a virtual machine style more of a virtual machine centered focus and and that could help us with getting extra compute capacity if we need it now i don't have anything more than that other than to say that yes we'll continue and just like jim our gratitude to ibm for being a cloud provider for for equipment we look to other cloud providers to help thanks very much any questions on oracle cloud Okay, next topic then, Docker platform support. So here's, here's my rough idea on how I wanna frame the initial document, starting with what we have today in terms of a tabular survey of the image types we support. So core and SSH agent, the JNLP agent, uh, various other images that the project supports, which JDK sources we support. Actually, this should go here which operating systems we support, which JDK sources we support. And then Jim, you highlighted one JDK version, if you will, and that's adopt. Uh oh, let's call it, no, let's what? Uh, say it? It's hotspot versus- it's, I think it's the JVM, I think it's the JVM, not JDK. There you go, very good, thank you. And that's- Hotspot. That's, yeah. Hotspot, open J9. Yeah. Very good. And those factor into, okay, what have we got? What, oh, oh, and I guess the other is official or eval, right? Because we've got the Jenkins for eval uh, project that is publishing images. Any other things in the, how do we highlight what we have today? Did I miss something else? Looks good. Okay. Then I thought the next step is talk about what we want. Oh, oh no, I had one more, which was issues with what we have. And the reason to put that there is highlight Debian 9 obsolescence. Alpine 3.9 end of support, uh, the Debian uh, Open JDK packaging errors, 
and and this that was several years ago that happened but it's a good example for us to highlight why we would prefer to rely on adopt open jdk rather than on open jdk also i think um arm support i don't think open jdk i think they're working on it but i don't think they have arm support currently oh oh and alpine support right right actually that's a good one arm and alpine non-support yeah by also, uh, are, by open jdk are they producing i don't think the at least the last time i checked i think there was a proposal um from the official Docker image uh, publisher, the you know the the group that publishes the official images, I think they stopped uh, supporting Open JDK. I don't think they're publishing new new builds besides x86. I think it's just they're pushing out Open JDK x86 uh, new new images, but S390 Power ARM and all that stuff they officially stopped. Uh, so you won't see any updates for the other ones. Excellent. Good, good, good examples of issues to highlight saying, hey, look, this is what I like that because for me, what, what we show is, hey, an image or a, a series of tables which illustrate just how complicated the things are that we currently have mm -hmm. because of all the different mixes. And all right, here's the, the issues that come from that complication and then switch into a, hey, here's what we want. We know we've got to do Intel. We, we want to add S390 as a form, as an official one and PowerPC and ARM. And then, so that's how this is processors. Um, one, one other thing I wanted to mention uh, up uh, what we have today or the other variants you could do is uh, Slim. Um, I know there's not only does Adopt have Slim images, which removes some of the unneeded um, files from uh, the JDK, uh, just like documentation and stuff like that. But also you have right. Debian Slim, you have, uh, you know, the Slim versions of your, you know, the own operating systems. Right. And, and in fact, Jenkins has that Debian, yeah. what we call Debian Slim, but Slim is not an operating system for Debian. It's just a variant. And yeah. So in our case, what we're doing removed. is Buster Slim and Buster. So, so it's again a place where we're being unclear, and this this platform support proposal can highlight, hey, here are the things where we're absolutely unclear on what what this thing is, because it's not just slim; it's Debian Buster, and happens to be the lightweight, the the small version of it. Mm -hmm. Also, are you guys not? Uh, I think I asked this in the the glitter chat. Um, it looks like Adopt and pretty much everyone else is starting to drop support for AMD, uh, sorry, uh, ARM 32-bit processors like ARM V6 or something like that. I forget which one, V, whatever. You guys aren't planning to do ARM 32 nope. or whatever its name. Okay. Nope. As far as, well, so one of, it's a good, good question. And one of my arguments why I think we should not consider adding 32-bit ARM is in order to support a processor, we need to have access to that processor from yeah. ci.jenkins.io mm -hmm. and from trusted mm -hmm. CI. And and you can't get cloud hosted 32 bit ARM. Yeah. At least not as far as I can. I, I, yeah, I think I, yeah, I think everyone's moving away from it. Uh, ARM 64 right. bit is obviously the successor. Right. And so so my technique at home on my Raspberry Pis has been I just lie and label them as ARM64 even though they're 32-bit. Mm -hmm. All right, so Debian, CentOS, and then Alpine question mark. And there are certainly people who like it, so. Yeah, so. So the, the idea then in the document is to talk about what we want. That those three things then lead lead to what the document will propose as guiding principles. And guiding principles, one is um, hardware or the cloud hosted uh, equipment must be available to test and build the uh, the image. So that that's 
So, or let's say it this way, hosted equipment must be available to the Jenkins project to test and build the image. Then I think we need people willing to contribute to maintaining, people willing to be maintainers. And that may be a new role where we have to say, hey, we need a, a maintainer for, for the Docker repository. I'm open to other guiding principles. I, oh, I actually, vendor should still support security fixes. So the example there is Windows Server 1809's last security fix means we would drop it from our list because the vendor's no longer delivering. Or Debian 9, when it exits long-term support, would no longer be allowed. Any other suggestions for guiding principles there? Okay. And then the, the idea is the document describes what rules we'll use to implement those principles and lots of writing still to do. And I intend to do that today on my day off. It's gonna be nice. <laughs> Any other topics we need to discuss here in our meeting? All right, I think that that concludes for today. So Jim will work the action items. Gareth, thank you in advance for your work on Windows Server 1909. We'll call that done. Thanks everybody. See you there, guys.